Good morning, everyone, and welcome today to at Cyber School. So, firstly, well done to all of you who completed the Yodelina little challenge yesterday. Um, hundreds of you completed the task, so really well done. And then, secondly, the way we label these classes will be changing. So, we'll be using the terms beginner, intermediate, and advanced. So, no matter your age, uh, you're all welcome to any class. And then, lastly, We'll be joining James again today to talk about secret messages and cryptography. So we ran this for a beginner class and it went down really, really well. Very, very challenging. So we think it will be suitable for the intermediate difficulty level today. So we'll learn about Caesar's cipher, rail fence ciphers and steganography. So good luck and have fun. Hello, I'm James and I'm going to teach you about secret messages today. Later in the week, I'm going to show you how you can read secret messages without what we call the key. I'm going to give you some new words to start this lesson. We'll be using them a lot, so I want to make sure you remember them now. The first word is cryptography, which means secret writing. We use it nowadays to mean secret reading as well. Everything we talk about today is part of what we call cryptography. The next two terms are clear text and ciphertext. The clear text is the message we want to send in secret. A cipher is a way of making a message secret, so the ciphertext is the message that we can send any way we want and still have it be secret. The next term is key. The key is the secret that makes our message into a cipher text, whatever that may be. Without the key, it's much harder to break the code. And with a good cipher, if you have the key, it should be very easy to get the clear text. Ciphers use two main techniques to make a clear text secret. The first one is substitution, which means switching one thing for another thing. This is just like a substitute in sports where one player is changed for another one. The second one is transposition, which just means to move things around a lot without changing them in any other way. You might have heard of codes and secret codes. There are lots of types of code and they aren't all secret. So we use the word cipher to mean a secret code instead of a normal code. Now, codes are really substitution codes, not transposition codes, but cipher will still mean something secret instead of a normal code. Last, we have steganography, which means hidden writing. Steganography is different from a cipher because it hides a message instead of making it difficult to read. Those sound the same, but you will see the difference when we've done all three. Steganography is part of cryptography as well. The first cryptography cipher we're going to look at is called the Caesar cipher. Caesar was an ancient Roman emperor. We're not here for history, but you need to know that anyone running an empire like Rome needs to send secret messages to other important people. He wasn't the first to use what we now call a substitution cipher, but his is the first where we know how it worked. Caesar's substitution cipher worked like this. Firstly, you need to write out the alphabet twice. The first time you write it out normally, and the second time you start at a different letter and then write it all the way through again. When you get to Z on the second alphabet, you start again at A until the two alphabets line up, like I've done here. You can start the second alphabet at any letter except A, because that wouldn't make a very good cipher alphabet. Next, we need our secret message, which I'll put at the top of the board here. It's a simple one for now. And then we need to do the substitution. To do this, we take the first letter of our clear text message, which is O, and change, check which letter it matches up to below, which is T. Then we match U with Z, R with W, and so on. 
writing down each substitute letter until we have our secret message. I really wouldn't want to try reading that one aloud. There are other types of substitution cipher which change blocks of letters or change the alphabet as you write the message so it's even harder to work out the key to read them. There are also types of substitution cipher which don't use real alphabets at all. The Caesar cipher is what we call a monalphabetic substitution cipher because it only uses one alphabet. Now it does mean it's very easy to break if you know the trick to how and we'll cover that on Friday. For now though I'll give you a clue to it. Notice how many times the letter E turns up even in our short clear text and how many times J turns up in our cipher text. E is the most common letter in the English language. Now that should give you a clue and we'll move on to transposition ciphers which are all about moving letters around. The transposition cipher we're going to learn is called the rail fence cipher. This is because when you're making it, when you're doing the cipher, some people say it looks like a fence. You can make it with a grid like I'm going to, which makes it easier, or without one if you want to. The person you're sending the message to needs to know how many rows you are using in the grid so that they can decode it. We're going to use two rows. First, we write out our secret message, which is up above. Next, we smush it together so we don't have any spaces in it. Now, you can leave spaces in if you want, it just can get quite confusing, particularly when two end up together, so I've taken them out. If you leave them in, you just treat them as you would any letter. Now we need to draw our grid. You can do it without the line, it's just easier to see with it. After we have our grid, we need to write out the message again, alternating, which means taking it in turns, between the top and bottom row. So our first letter is T, and we write it on the top row. Then we write H on the bottom row, I on the top row, S on the bottom row, and I on the top row again, and so on until we've written the whole message. Finally, we take the two rows and smush them both together like we did at the start so that our secret message comes out like this. This our is our message has become Teoretis Gussus Kemse. If you didn't know what the original message was, that should be really difficult to understand and it was quite hard to say for me. Now to decrypt the message, someone needs to know the grid that we used so if you're using this to send messages to friends, then make sure you've shared the key, which is the number of rows in the grid, otherwise they won't be able to read it. To decrypt it, you just need to go through the same steps backwards, so drawing out the grid and then writing the first half of the message on the top row with spaces in between and the second half of the message on the bottom row with spaces in between. After that, you smush the two rows together instead of smushing each one sideways and you'll have your message. If you've used three rows or more, you will use the first third of the message or first quarter depending on the number of rows that you've used. Now we're going to move on to steganography in a bit, so if you wanted to take a break to get a drink after this bit would be a good time. This bit is about using the techniques we already know, so you could mix them together to make it really difficult. You could use a Caesar cipher first and then a rail fence cipher to make it a really difficult one. I'll be giving you one of these to decrypt at the end as your assignment for today, but don't worry, I will give you the keys as well. If you want to make a message really secret, you use different types of encryption. We have programs on computers that do this for us these days and they do it all with maths instead of writing as we are. It's basically the same thing but looks a lot more complicated and it's far too difficult mostly for us humans to do it quickly. If you do want to make a message difficult and you want to be able to do it 
as a human and you want to make it difficult for a computer, you can use the next technique mixed in as well, and that's steganography. So now's the time to grab a drink if you want one or a snack or to ask any questions of whoever's looking after you, uh, try and make them difficult questions, and then we'll move on to steganography. Steganography is a bit different from the two cipher step techniques, substitution, which is switching things out, and transposition, which is moving them around, which we've already spoken about. It's still part of cryptography, but instead of making the message difficult to read, we make it hard to find. You might have heard of hiding in plain sight. Well, that's what steganography does. Nowadays, people use computers to hide messages in pictures or videos or songs, but we're going to look at some older methods of doing it that you could probably do at home. One thing you've heard of is most likely invisible ink. You can make this with a cocktail stick or a cotton bud and some lemon juice and some paper. Just dip the cocktail stick into the lemon juice and write or draw on the paper with it. To the make the message appear you can put the paper on a radiator for a while or use a hairdryer. Now make sure an adult is with you and whatever you do don't do what I did and try to use the oven to speed it up. As you can see, I nearly burned my house down, and if I hadn't been supervised by an adult, I would have done. There are other kinds of steganography, including lots of different invisible inks. Another easy and fun one is ultraviolet light, where you need to have a particular type of torch or bulb to make it show up. It even glows under this special torch, and you can write a secret letter on top of a normal letter with it. It's even used on money as one of the ways to prove it's real money instead of fake. And with computers, we can also hide messages in normal files or in pictures, so that only someone who knows the message is there and how to get it out can find it. But we are talking about older methods of steganography which don't use computers and which you can do at home. Some are very simple, making certain letters in a non-secret message bold, which will then make up the secret message you want to send. Or you can highlight letters another way, like with italics or pinholes or dots under them or different colourings. Dots of invisible ink next to the letters that you want. If you really want to make it difficult, you could combine all of these. So you could start off using a Caesar substitution cipher to switch all of the letters out, then use a transposition cipher to mix them up, then write out a long fake message that you can hide your real message in using a steganography technique. Try all of these things mixed up if you get bored and see if you can actually exchange secret messages with your friends by giving each other keys first. Particularly see if your parents can read the messages once you've encoded them as well and it's much more fun if you won't tell them what the message really says unless they can decode it on their own. Now we get to the assignment. So for this, I'm going to give you a secret message, a cipher text. What you need to do is decrypt it or decode it or get the clear text. And then ask whoever is looking after you to help you follow the instructions in it. I've started with a Caesar cipher first, where I've started the alphabet with A equals I and then I've used two rows in a rail fence cipher. You'll need to put the spaces back in yourself. If you need a reminder of how to decode, you can watch this lesson again once the live one is finished, or if you need help, you can look for a link to a help sheet in the description of this video. You might think that the order of how you decode it matters, but it doesn't. Try it with rail fence first and with the Caesar cipher first, and try and figure out why the order doesn't matter. If you need more help or have any questions, get whoever is looking after you to send us a tweet at the cyber school address.